the Mohawk had joined the Ganawita in his journey. And therefore, he had to go west to the Seneca. There, he would make another ally by the name of Jigonsase. So, Diganawida, Hiawatha, and Jigonsase returned to the Onondaga and they confronted Taradaho. And at first, he did not want to end the great warpath of the warring peoples. And he wanted to conquer the other tribes in war, not through peace and union, unlike like how the other tribes wanted. Therefore, Jigonsose quite literally slapped some sense into him. At least that's how the story goes. Uh, so, Diganawita and Hiawatha and Taradaho, they made a deal. There would be a union, a confederacy. The Iroquois confederacy would begin. However, Taradaho was to be the leader of it. It was here at Kohus Falls that Deganawita proposed the Law of Great Peace, which is the Iroquoian Constitution. Uh, in Iroquoian, they're known as the Hore no Shone, which means the people of the Longhouse. And Deganawita's Law of Great Peace was very innovative in the fact that it established a revolutionary style of government. Uh, the Iroquoian government was the first to have a bicameral legislature, which today can be found in the American uh, Houses of Congress and, and the uh, House of Representatives and the Senate. The Iroquoian legislation is known as the Council of the Longhouse, and it is made up of two groups. One group, known as the Little Brothers, was made up of the Seneca, the Cayuga, and the Oneida, while the other group, known as the Big Brothers, was made up of the Onondaga and the Mohawk. An issue would first go to the Little Brothers, who would discuss the issue and come to a conclusion. Then it would go to the Big Brothers, who would do the same. And finally, the final decider on the, any issue would be the chief leader of the Onondaga, known as Tadadaho. Uh, he, whenever he becomes the leader, he takes on the name Tadadaho. The Korean government was revolutionary, and it would be an inspiring factor in the bicameral legislature of the United States. Even. However, the Americans would not treat their Native American brothers and sisters with respect or integrity. And many Iroquoians were forced to leave their homes for Canada, even starting at the end of the revolution due to ethnic cleansing. This was genocide at its worst. And what was done to the Native Americans even has its impacts today. Uh, with events like the Standing Rock protests.